First question is from Jeremiah Johnson. I am an extremely picky person. It's hard for me to eat meat every day. I don't like whey protein, and I can't eat enough eggs a day to hit my protein intake. What options do I have left? God, it's so good to be alive today when we have all these options. Right? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't like this. I don't like this. Oh, I don't no, like that. Going I don't the like that. I would go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I, well, I I'm gonna throw you in the wilderness, son. <laughs> yeah, let's, <laughs> yeah, let's see like, what you're uh, yeah, gonna eat there. Yeah. Okay, hey, well, man, Jeremiah, man. your options are other stuff. Yeah. I mean, what are you asking? You know, yeah. is is your question that you want to have more protein in your diet? In which case. You're going to have to pick and you're going to have to be able to reframe how you, uh, your perceptions and your ideas and your feelings around some of these foods. Can, can you do that? Yes. It's totally possible. I did that. I hated fish for most of my life. Could not stand fish. Mm -hmm. Couldn't stand the smell. Hated it. Didn't like it. And then one year I became an adult and I went, we went to Italy and um, I said to myself, you know, uh, I'm just gonna open. I'm just gonna be open-minded. I'm gonna really try to appreciate the fish. I know it's healthy for me, so I'm gonna appreciate the health uh, aspects of it. And I'm just gonna have some and really try to erase some of my old preconceived notions about mm. fish. And here's what happened: I didn't turn into a fish lover, but now I can eat fish mm -hmm. because I my now because what happened is I developed a different relationship around it because I opened my mind a little bit around a food that I thought I hated or that I had this idea that I hated all the time. So you can try that. Now, if that's too hard for you and you don't want to do that, well, then eat less protein. And there's and the consequence of that, of course, is you're, you're probably why you're asking this question. You'll, maybe you're not going to recover as fast, build as much muscle. So what? If it's too hard for you to eat those foods, then don't eat them. Now, if those foods are foods that cause gastrointestinal issues, and food intolerances, and that's why you can't eat them. Yeah, it's a different thing. I don't think that's then it's issue. better to not eat them. But the way you you know ask the question was, I'm picky. No, yeah, yeah. and I again, I think I I would be hard on this guy because that was me, you know, growing up and like having uh, that mentality for a long period of time, and and you know, being really. Uh, giving a lot of pushback in terms of like what people would offer. I'm like, oh, I don't really like that. And like, you know, really limiting my options. And I had to work at it. I really had to adamantly reframe like, okay, if this is good for me, I got to start uh, finding what I can like about it, you know, and like how I'm feeling afterwards when I just focus on these types of foods and I introduce them into my diet. Uh, and, and, you know, you just got to pick up on different aspects of it to uh, focus on. And, and I think that, um, you know, that takes a lot of work. I had the same issues with fish, like Sal mentioned, uh, that's something that I'm still, even to this day, uh, trying to mentally uh, approach, you know, dishes like that, where I, I'm associating it now, like I used to be really into fishing. And so there was experiences behind it when I catch a oh, fish that's and, brilliant. That, and that's when I did really enjoy it. And it was very brief, a uh, period of my life where I was like, Oh, and we, and, you know, and we grilled it and it was a family thing. And, you know, it was like brilliant. a celebration that I, mm -hmm. that I caught the fish. And so I'm trying to like think of these moments where I've, you know, had good, uh, you know, times with, with those types of foods. So I don't know, like, honestly, it's, it's, it's just something that I, I feel this, this just screams to me. It's almost, you got to take it like you're training. You, you got to start training on reframing these types of foods. So that way, if, you know, it's good for you, then uh, it's something that you can start to like and enjoy. I mean, I too, I hated all kinds of shit that I eat now all the time. I hated fish. I hated eggs. Um, vegetables. I, probably. I hated Brussels sprouts. I yeah. mean, and these are sta staples in, and a lot of times it's your experience you have with it. The handful of times that you first eat it, you know, uh, I, I still, to this day, I don't like fish that isn't cooked a certain way. And there's certain fishes I like that I don't really care for. And I know like, like salmon, everybody knows like salmon's one of the best. I'm not a big salmon eater. Like I, I like white fish better. So how you prepare it a lot of times can make a difference. Now, this is also highlights why we talk about why getting your protein intake is so hard for vegans because you could still do it. Vegans do it. There's vegans out there that are bodybuilders that get enough protein intake and they're not eating any of these foods. So you can do it. You can eat nuts and seeds and beans and to find your protein. It's just difficult. So if you're going to eliminate you know, these food groups and say that you don't like them and yet you still care so much about hitting your protein intake, well, you, something's got to give. Either like Sal said, 
let go the fact that you're not going to hit that much protein and you may not build maximal muscle all the time because you're not hitting the most doesn't mean you can't build some muscle, you can't be fit, you can't be healthy just because you're not getting, you know, one and a half grams of protein or whatever. That's not a big deal. But if you care that much about getting maximal gains and then you're also being super picky about the food, I mean, I don't know what to tell you in a situation yeah, like that. The part that, that's kind of weird to me is that I don't like whey protein part. Like whey protein, the way that they've the flavors and stuff that they make, it's almost like a milkshake. Yeah, you, you don't like ice cream? Yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> you don't I like mean, strawberry cake. I mean, yeah. okay, maybe it's the way. All right, weird guy. Yeah, maybe it's. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like he's. <laughs> this is the guy that gets eats like corn dogs and chicken nuggets, so he gets yeah. his protein. Yeah, yeah. I, look, I mean, you. I mean, maybe try Organifi's protein. There's no way in it. It's all vegan, um, and it's the best tasting vegan protein um, that I've ever had. It's got a great amino acid profile. Maybe try that. But look, here's the deal. Your preferences for food are partially genetic. The studies show that there's some partial genetic uh, preferences, but the bigger part of it, this is proven, is psychological. Yes. The bigger part of, mm. of what foods you prefer and like has to do with what they're associated with, has to do with your past experiences and your current ideas around those foods. Look, you take the average American and you have them walk through an open fish market with the smell of the fish. And and many Americans would be like, oh, yeah. that smells gross. Yeah. You, you take people from Asian countries, people who grow up around these open fish markets, and the smell is alluring to them. There's nothing gross about it. Now, it's all because... Now, I'm, now you could take an American Asian person, someone who grew up here and everything, and they'd be, be, they would probably be apprehensive to it as well. And you could take an American that grew up in, in China or in Japan, and they would probably like the smell of the open air fish market. So knowing that you can condition yourself and train yourself by having different ideas around food. I would, I, when I was a real young kid, I hated meat. My mom will tell the story. Anytime she meets somebody who, you know, and, and they start talking about me like, Oh, I know you're my, my mom loves to tell a story about how mm. I hated to eat meat and how when she would leave, she would leave the room for a second, come back that the meat wouldn't be on the plate and she'd check the garbage, it'd be in there and then we'd have this big old fight about it or whatever. This is something I did as a kid, I hated meat. Mm. Now, as I got older, I got really into working out yeah. and I learned that meat built muscle. And you found bacon. And, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I learned that meat built muscle and so I developed a completely different association yeah. around meat and then I started to like the taste of meat. And mm. so you can do this with yourself but if you start out by saying, I'm a picky person, you automatically already yeah, right. identify right. as a picky person. This is who I am. You don't have to be. You don't. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, that's you, another thing. I can also not be. Yeah, you right. really don't <laughs> yes. have to be. Be open-minded. Try different foods. Open-minded means don't have expectations. And then learn to value foods for lots of their different values, not just the maybe the hyper palatability of it or the taste of it, but rather how does it make me feel? What is the other values of it? And then if you could get through that and, and start to value foods that way, then what you'll find is that you'll likely start to actually appreciate the food, and then you might actually start to crave and enjoy the food. And I've done that to myself, and I've trained clients that way many, many times.